In March of 2013, a group of 29 bipartisan leaders came together to examine America's deeply polarized political system. The task? To explore the causes and consequences of this partisan divide and find ways to unlock the gridlock. Together, they sought to make our electoral processes fairer, break the congressional stalemate, and promote public service. The Commission on Political Reform faced a difficult challenge. Consensus was no easy task. And when commissioners sat down to develop recommendations, it was clear there was a wide range of viewpoints among the group. I was worried that we had liberals and conservatives, Republicans and Democrats, and that we would really never be able to reach consensus on any issue. It was heated, but anytime you try to find a consensus with a diverse group, it's not easy, but we produced a good product. After 15 months, four town hall meetings, and countless debates, polls, and meetings with experts, the Commission on Political Reform released its final report with 65 recommendations, a bipartisan blueprint to strengthen our democracy. The concrete recommendations forged by Republicans and Democrats, we give people hope and the means to focus on specific and constructive ways that are empowering. Redistricting is a very political. Uh, it is, in many cases, very polarizing within the districts and in, within the states. And so we've got to find a way to get over that and to find something that uh, is fair and everybody understands and produces a better result. The commission recommends that states adopt redistricting commissions that have bipartisan support from the legislature and the electorate. Encouraging states to do that is one really important way that you can ensure that you're not sending the most partisan people to Congress. You know, sort of coupled with that is that we really encourage states to figure out ways to raise the number of people who are actually voting in those congressional primaries in particular. The problem we face with voter registration is that we want as many people voting as we can possibly get, but at the same time, we want to prevent vote fraud. We don't want dead people or multiple voting going on. That's the problem we face. I believe it should be as easy as possible to vote. I believe the polls should be open as long as possible. I believe it should be easy to register to vote. I believe it's the most important thing we do as citizens. To enhance voter participation, the Commission recommends holding more open primary elections and creating a single national congressional primary date in June. Having primaries all on one day helps to really coalesce the media attention and the public attention around the election that's going on instead of spreading them over several months. We have a single general election day. We need a single primary election day. To strengthen public trust, the Commission recommends a clear, transparent way to follow the money in elections. Another important and achievable action would be to require disclosure of political contributions, including those that are made to outside and independent groups, uh, so that citizens have full information on who is paying for the message that they see. Well, the filibuster is a Senate tradition that allows unlimited speech. You can speak as long as you want to. The record is over 24 hours by Strom Thurmond back in the 1960s. It's been abused in recent years. Lyndon Johnson had one filibuster in six years. Harry Reid, in that same period of time, has had over 300. That's all you need to know about filibusters and the abuse today. Well, I think that the filibuster has become a problem. I think it's being overused. But I also think that it's important that minority rights and opportunities of all senators to offer amendments be protected. To reduce gridlock from filibusters, the commission recommends limiting the filibuster, allowing more minority party amendments, and restoring the legislative committee process. The minority has to have a voice in legislation. That's what compromise and consensus is all about. And we believe that may be the biggest obstacle right now 
is, is get into that consensus. And you're not going to get to it unless you offer the minority party an opportunity to amend. Like all the young men of my generation, I did public service in the form of the draft. We didn't do it for service reasons, but it had the experience of binding the country together by giving everyone in the generation a common experience to share. We're missing that today. I'll agree that the government may not be the best organization to provide opportunities for service, but there should be ways the government can look around to make opportunities available to everyone. To engage Americans in civic life, the Commission recommends encouraging all Americans ages 18 to 28 to commit to one full year of service in their communities and to the nation through military, civilian, or volunteer service. I think that the federal government should scale up its role in places like the Peace Corps and AmeriCorps and others in order to give people the opportunities they need. But doing this will make young people better positioned to be contributing uh, citizens to this country. The Commission's recommendations have the potential to transform the nation's politics and civic life at a critical time in our nation's history. Everywhere I travel, people are fearful that the current dysfunction is going to become a permanent culture. But regardless of what the political classes and the polarizing forces would have you believe, we can bridge the partisan divide. That's what the Commission on Political Reform is all about.